Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I've got a special episode for you today. I'm going to be taking you to my friend Peter's house. Peter makes shoes out of his garage, and he's kind of an artisan of sorts. I'm going to show you a little bit about what he does and show you a few steps of what it takes to make a pair of shoes. Check it out. Hey, I'm Peter Stull. I'm here with Jason Dorn, and we're going to do some shoemaking today. I'll take uh, the dies and I'll punch them out, and so you end up with this basically. Okay. Um, and then what I'll do is I rough up the top part here because there's another step. When the shoe's done, I'm going to be putting an insole on there. Okay. And so I need to pre rough up the top part too. So I, I take a, the orbital sander and do the same thing to this. Because once the, once the shoe is made, you can't get an orbital sander in there and sand it out. You have to do it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. See, so the, the process, uh, you have to think ahead a little bit. Um, so once the insole is ready to go, you just find the matching last and uh, tack it on, basically. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. And I found that uh, <clears throat> vegetable tan leather is really nice um, to be standing on. Uh, it's the kind of leather that are in you know, high-end... Uh, menswear shoes uh, and that you know take the shape of the foot it's a little bit porous um, and over time uh, just kind of adds to the comfort of the shoe even though there's no padding um, it'll kind of take the shape of the shoe um, better than a synthetic product and I usually tack it on with some uh, some of these shoe tacks that are pretty short because I'm going to be taking because once I Finish making the shoe. I'm going to take them out. Sometimes I won't get it quite on. Just a little bit. Let's see. Pretty important to get it centered right. You know, you don't want it to be off. Sometimes when you hammer that nail in, it wants to shift a little bit. All right, I'm through times a charm. Yep, go. I put four tacks usually. They're pretty fragile, huh? Um, yeah, they bend really easy. Yeah. But uh, I don't like putting too big attacks in here. Um, and I like it to be flush. So, there we go. That's on there pretty good. Nice and even. Even enough. What do you find most rewarding about your work? Uh, probably the relaxation element. Yeah, just kind of getting lost in the process. Yeah, as long as it's not too exhausting, um, you know, it's pretty enjoyable for me. What part of the process do you like most? Um, sometimes I like this just because uh, it's simple, you know. Um, Right now, I, I, I can't seem to get it going fast, but um, I'll get this stuff moving pretty quick where you know, none of these nails bend. When, once you get in the zone, things just sort of flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But uh, I like using the, uh, the clicker press a lot, one that, that cuts out um, leather with the cutting dies because, uh, I don't know, it's just fun to cut cut stuff out at the press of a button, you know? Yeah, the mechanical aspect of it. Yeah, it goes quick, you know? There's really not any physical work I have to do. I just sit there and press the button, make sure that I uh, don't waste leather, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like you're making cookies. Don't waste the dough? Yeah, just using leather instead, basically. So. What got you into shoemaking? Um... Well, I had a shoe store, and uh, 
unfortunately didn't have enough money to hire anybody to work for me. So it was just me and my wife and uh, selling um, Italian uh, made shoes in the shop and thought to myself, geez, these are so simple. Why, why don't I just try and make some of this stuff in the basement? And so I, that's what I did. And it was pretty crude, you know. I'm kind of handy, so I, you know, I made it work, but, you know, by, I was not mastered at all at it, but I still sold some, which told me that, wow, you know, <laughs> how'd that happen? And, uh, you know, just kind of went with it. That's... And, you know, at that time I knew that I wasn't very good at it, um, but I realized that, uh, you know, it's possible to, I had a lot that I knew I could learn, and, uh, you know, it's been a, a fun journey. So, okay, we got the, uh, the insoles on there. Let's, uh, let's last this thing. All right. So these are the uppers that we're going to put on. This is kind of like my signature uh, design here that I put on um, all the soles of the... Uh, <clears throat> I would say like menswear styles. And uh, you know, I do uh, I do one where I, I paint it on the uh, on the upper there. Um, yeah. I use bigger tacks uh, in this, um, on this part. And I don't hammer them all the way in either. I'll leave them sticking out a little bit because I will be pulling them out eventually and it's not fun to dig them out. So they're just kind of primary guide? Yeah. It's really, I mean, it's, it's not, yeah, nothing's really set in stone with these tacks. I don't, I like to use as few tacks as possible. You know, you're just gonna, it's gonna be, you're gonna spend less time making the shoe if you're efficient <clears throat> like that. And shoes do take forever to make, and uh, if you can find a way to make it shorter, do it. You know? That's kind of slippery. Okay, so I think this looks pretty even. That's about how high up I like to go on the last here. Just from, I, uh, you know, I've made hundreds of these things and I know where it kind of sits on the instep of the foot. I think that's, you want it to go too high up. You can't go too low either because it's got to stay on the foot. So that's, I'd say that's looking pretty good. So next, next I'm going to pull these, these in a little tighter. So I look for any, uh, I don't know, this one's looking pretty even, so I'm just going to pull it. I like to just hold it there with my thumb. All right, so that's there. All right, let's get the other side. Pretty tight, you know. I gotta get some get the wrinkles out. See, I like these tacks too because they've got this like this like spike on the ends of them. I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, kind of beveled almost to it a just, different angle. 
It's just a spike. It's like, I don't know how they make these things, but they do, you can stick it right in there and it stays in place. Yeah. It also bends real easy, so you know, if you screw up, you just start right over. Okay, so we got, got that part going pretty good. Um, yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. So, what I'll end up doing, what I usually like to do is pull this one tight too. Just to make sure we're looking. Kind of get those creases <laughs> out. Almost to... Yeah, just for reference. I'm not going to keep this one in, um, but it, uh, I just like to know that I'm not off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty even. All right, so there's the left. Now I gotta do the, the right one. Um, as close to how that one sits as possible. Pull this tight, we'll take a look at them. If they look good, we'll get moved to the next step. Say that's pretty good, right? Looks pretty good to me. I said it was pretty good. Yeah, that's right on. But you know, no shoes are perfect. You know, it's part of the thing of handmade shoes. It's uh, even with uh, sh shoes that are lasted with machines, they're never perfectly accurate. But um, I would say for being handmade, this is real accurate. All right, so now that that part is on. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off, take the tack out, and what I like to do is trim all this excess stuff out, because I don't need all this extra leather up in here. I'm going to end up wrapping it around the uh, insole. Okay, anyway, I'd probably go over the edge about... Maybe a half inch. These scissors have lasted me like 10 years and I've never even sharpened them once. It's good to have a couple pairs of these if you're making shoes. So yeah, it's kind of a, a meditative process, you know, it's just kind of, <laughs> um, it can be pretty relaxing if you're not overwhelmed with work. I'm going to, this is a little extra in here, I'm going to take out too, because I just don't need it all. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. I'd say that's good for now. Okay. I always put really, really high quality lining on all the shoes I do uh, because I know from 25 plus years of selling shoes that uh, people like the way it feels a lot. So, you know, um, it's also a way that a lot of, um, let's say, um, foreign shoemakers will cut costs. They use cheap stuff. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel as nice on the foot. Um, all of my shoes feel good on the foot because they have the nicest lighting that you can get. A little bit more plush feel to it almost. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, I guess some high-end uh, shoe makers, um, we can all, um, can use different kinds of lighting that I do. 
a lot of times they'll be um, kind of glossy or something on the inside. I like to use an unfinished um, leather that is porous because um, uh, your feet will feel cooler when, when the leather wicks the uh, moisture away from your foot. You know? And that's, that's what this stuff does. I mean, you, you feel it, you know. It's uh, kind of almost velvety a little bit. It's just uh, natural uh, vegetable tan leather. Okay. So uh, you can see that this is um, separated here. Yeah. It's separated for a reason. It's separated from about here forward because I that because you need it separated so you can do the toe box okay this part needs to be attached 100% can't come off this lining will never come separated I use a water-based glue um, and it's very strong okay all right so next step um, I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna last this uh, lining around here and then we can start um, can start gluing stuff down That's, about, that, that's how far I have it marked. That's how far it comes up. That's going to be the toe box. So this is the uh, solvent-based uh, glue. And this stuff, you don't want to breathe this stuff. And it's supposed to be fine if you're in an open uh, workspace, which I am, but I don't like breathing any of it. So I always put this stuff, I always put a respirator on when I'm doing this. Okay, well, the sucker's on there good. There we go. All right, I'll probably do two coats. That's one coat on that one. All right, there's two. Doesn't take very long at all to dry. Especially if it's the first coat. Uh, so you uh, let it dry for like 10 minutes at most? Or yeah, something, something like that. that. Just kind of set. Mm -hmm. and then what we'll do is we'll last, we'll, we'll start lasting it, which means we'll, you know, like uh, connect the upper to the insole there. That's the next step. It always dries really quick on the uh, veg tan stuff right here. I guess they're both veg tan, but this is a little raw. Uh, yeah, so it's almost ready for another coat. But, uh, all right, so we got an insole die here. Got the uh, outsole dies. This is my shank die. I have the heel, I guess you call it a heel plate die. And this is the front of the heel. All right. So I guess I could cut out that one. Um, so this is what I make my shanks out of. Never heard of anyone using this material before, but I do it because it works. It's, um, it's called Kydex. People, um, they use it for um, holsters a lot. Oh, it's pliable. You can kind of heat it and bend it and shape yeah, it. Yeah, you can heat it and shape it. And when it, when it, um, when it cools, it gets real hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you notice, all of my shoe is made, all the shoes I make, um, I make all the components for them. I don't buy any components anywhere else because my one of my philosophies is not to be dependent on anybody else for making a shoe. All right, we'll, we'll do 
the heel plate first. Go back of the heel there. I don't know. They call them heel tabs. What do they call them? Heel tabs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Vibram, I mean, they make good stuff. I like to use Vibram rubber because it lasts like forever. It's really hard to wear this stuff down. Um, so when you're using a, a clicker press, if you can raise it up and down a little bit depending on the thickness, like the height of the material you're using. Right here. Alright. Um, and then this dial dials in how um, how much pressure you want on the on the die. Okay? Because it'll go I could I could prep put pressure on this thing that would make that die stick all like, right into this stuff and I wouldn't be able to get out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I've got it. There's a lot of experimentation you gotta do to figure out what's the right amount of pressure for cutting out a little heel part. Yeah. Okay, I've got them all written down. It's taking me I don't know, a year to figure, I mean, a long time to figure out stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay, ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, we got that one in there. Pretty easy, right? Pop it out. Okay. It's nice because I don't have to use a saw. It's already done, basically. So, need two of those. Now that, uh, I believe it's a, I think it's 12 iron, same thickness as this stuff, okay? So the front of the heel I'm gonna make of, the, of this. This is more expensive. That's why you don't do the whole thing rubber. Plus it's kind of unnecessary, right? You can exactly. just kind of put a little third of the heel yeah. rubber, yeah? Yeah, the leather part, I mean, you'll never see much wear mm -hmm. compared to the heel. And you can see this right here. You know what that is? They're where they burn into the, the side of the cow? Yep. To brand them? Yeah. Little MC ranch there. Yep. McDonald had a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so next I'm going to do a shank. All right. Same thing, you want to waste as little as possible of this stuff because, you know, it's going to get expensive. Insole, too. <laughs> Turn this over. Right and left. So it's really sharpened on both sides, so you can just flip it and. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's sharpened. You know, it's not like razor sharp, but it's you know doesn't need to be. Done. All right. Here's the uh, size nine insole. Yeah, turn it over. All right. This is. This is the where the power comes into this machine. Punching through that thick. Yeah, man, that's some serious business there. Yeah, we'll go right up to that wrinkle. Right up. There we go. 
making cookies. Uh, soak them in water for a couple hours. Really soften them up? Uh, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll soak them in water for a few hours and then I'll take them out and I'll uh, put them on my shoe press and I'll put them underneath the um, uh, last and, and squash the last on top of it so that this takes the shape of the uh, last that's going to be you know used for this shoe, particular shoe. Mm -hmm. Uh, gives more of a contoured effect, you know, on the final product, which, you know, ultimately is more, more comfortable. Point, nice. So you can look better. So. Okay, I think the glue's on probably dry there. We can put another coat on. Are going to be, um, that's how they sit on the shoe, right? Back at the heel of a shoe. Um, but where they meet, I need to make the connection a little more even, otherwise you have, it looks like a gap even though it's together. So that's what the, I do here, I just flatten it out a little bit. You won't see anything, it's just nice and clean. Alright. So let's uh let's heat up some shanks. Alright, so here's the shank, and uh I'm gonna I want this shank to have the same contour as the bottom of this last here. Okay, because uh, it just it'll make the shoe more comfortable, and it'll also make it so you don't feel the heel underneath your your foot when you're walking. Um, and and uh, I I think it it keeps your foot from fatiguing also um, when you when you spend a lot of time standing when you have something stiff in this this section of the shoe. So that's why we use shanks, and uh, this is where it's going to go on the shoe. But what I want to do is uh, shape it. So here we go. You gotta kind of move quick. I got a little kind of a spongy type device that I just squash it down with. And wait maybe about 10 seconds and then it'll be cool enough to hold the shape. And then once I do, once I finish this, I'll take it over to that sanding wheel and, uh, and shape it a little bit more. This is, this is all my own construction. I've never seen anyone do this before, but, uh, for how I like to be self-sufficient with shoes, uh, it does a job for me. Um, like I said, I don't want, I don't want to rely on any companies for shoe components. So there we go. So now it's got a shape to it, as you can see, sitting there, it kind of bows. Okay, and that's what you want. That's what I want. All right, let's do the other one. Nice and floppy. Okay, come on closer. All right, we got that on there. Let's get that pressed down. Basically got the idea from uh, people making holsters online. Same concept. Good. 
Okay. Guy's hot. This heating iron stay hot for a while, so you guys gotta be careful where you're setting it down. All right. So I'll let this cool off for a couple minutes. I mean, it's about ready to go, but might as well uh, get this set up over here. All right. So. Let's see here. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off this little pointy edge here and this one here. And uh, <clears throat> then I'm going to, I don't know, I guess you would call it skive it. I need, I need this, this edge to be um, uh, angled downward, skived, um, so that when it, when it, goes, when it touches the, uh, out, the top of the outsole, that the transition, there's no step there in the transition. Because you'd be able to feel that if it were there. So that's that's how I do it. So the edges are all nice and um, uh, angled downward now. So when I glue this thing onto the insole, I mean the uh, the uh, bottom sole, you won't feel that transition in there and it'll make it nice and stiff. Add a lot of stiffness to that uh, arch area of the shoe. So. And uh, this can be pretty dangerous here. <laughs> This thing will take the skin off your knuckle in a second. Yeah. So, you know, you, you gotta be if if you're gonna play around with this stuff, you gotta be real. Uh, you gotta take your time, be careful, and uh, just know that you can lose the top <laughs> top of your fingernail in a second if you if you don't do it right. All right, so we're just gonna last the um, toe box portion of this next. So we're basically attaching this to the insole. That's on there. That's not going to come off. That's on there pretty good. So you're going to give them more excess stuff. Push it down a little more. All right. So um, you don't want any wrinkles in this part. This is a toe box. Okay. So it's very noticeable if you don't do this right. So I like to get, you know, um, you'll see when I'm done how this is pulled over.
So you're kind of pulling it, and then the glue itself is is assisting you to, by holding so it. So I, I, I pull it and I twist it, uh -huh. and you kind of round the corner, and uh -huh. it, it, that way you get rid of the wrinkles yeah. in here. And uh, and you tack it down as soon as you're done, you know what I mean? Like right now, yeah. tacking that guy down. You pull nice and tight all the way to the end there. Okay, so this edge is pretty good. You know, you just need to get it started in there like that, so it's nice and tight. Alright, and uh, should be good. You just hammer it down. So that's uh, the magic of contact cement. You can also shape the front a little bit because the insole pokes out. Sometimes you get a little bit uneven right in there. All right, so see, it's looking pretty good. What do you find most fulfilling about this artistic process? Uh, I don't know, just being productive, I guess. Um, um, making something from start to finish, you know. Um, Getting lost in a creation process, kind of? Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> as long as there's no stress there, you know, you're not under pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, to perform like you know you got all these shoes that you need to make for people that that gets a little stressful I don't don't really like that so I kind of um, I'm not too aggressive with my marketing at this point okay so that toe box I think is looking good box basically done um, so next what I'll be doing is I'll be putting uh, some um, stiffener over the top and but before I do that I want to get rid of all this stuff so I'm gonna take it over to the sanding machine I no longer need this nail here because it's being held down by this okay so now the nails start coming out um, but I'm gonna sand this down smooth and then we'll start working on the uh, stiffener Alright, smooth that out. We don't need these wrinkles, obviously.
that. Cool. I've read about all different ways you can make this stuff. And uh, a lot of it you have to like, I mean, you gotta get from Germany or something. I mean, it's like pretty, uh, pretty um, extensive. And uh, I found that this will work just as good as any of that stuff. And you can get it at the local hardware store. You know, it's readily available and it's cheap, really cheap. Cause you're gonna go through a lot of this stuff. Mix a little sawdust in there and yeah, some glue, wood glue. Yeah, wood glue, sawdust. Works great as toast stiffener. Now, another thing I've noticed is uh, gotta make sure the uh, leather is um, doesn't have glue on it, so that the uh, stiffener uh, sinks into it. And it will that way it hardens up the leather even further, kind of soaks more into the fibers of the leather. Yeah, it, it just um, bond, like it uh, makes the leather hard. Not, you know, if you have glue, like a layer of glue in between, um, it won't. Uh, you just have less stiffener in there because it won't. the The lining won't become part of it. More cookie dough, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this is pancake batter. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. Nummy. Okay, um, I think that's a pretty good consistency. It's gotta be a little bit runny because um, when you paint this stuff onto the uh, toe box, uh, you don't want it to be lumpy. You want it to like, uh, you want it to kind of like, like it'll smooth itself out basically if it's a little bit runny. So I guess pancake batter consistency is like what I'm going for here. All right, so uh, now I, I like to make sure I have the toe boxes at about the same you know, to match basically, because sometimes they can pull it back one further than the other. So as long as they're roughly the same here. Okay, so this one press go forward a little more. That way they just match up a little better. Okay, I'm gonna say that looking. That's looking pretty good. Okay. stuff will harden up real good and uh, once it is hardened up I will go in there with a file kind of make sure there's a smooth transition right where the uh, right where it starts there so you don't see it through the leather once I pull that upper over it after so there's no big lump line kind it, of thing. yeah you know pretty self-explanatory Get a nice thick coat in there, and that's all you need. I don't need to say I don't need to do a second coat. Uh, you know, that's a whole nother thing. It took me a long time to figure out what am I going to use for toe stiffener? How long? How many coats do you need? You know, uh, that's the key right there. You just do the you do the uh, wood glue, some uh, sawdust. One coat, you're good to go. All right, so I got some, just a little bit on the bottom there. Just kind of kind of come over the edge. So once this dries, I'm gonna go over and sand it all off again, just like I did a few minutes ago. So I put that somewhere where it can drip pretty much. I guess this is a good spot for that. And it will kind of, it'll drip a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't drip too much. If it drips too much, you don't, it's not thick enough, so. 
but even if you get a little bit too much drip, you'll still be fine. It'll still be stiff. It's just, uh, you know, you don't want to make a mess every, every time you do a toe box. This is the sole we cut out maybe an hour ago, I guess. Nice and floppy, waterlogged. So I'm just going to let this dry, as you can see from there, you can probably see there's a decent contour there. It'll hold. It'll eventually flatten out a little bit after I manipulate it a little more after it's dry. But when you uh, press the sole onto the shoe, there's like some, uh, it's almost like there's some memory involved, like muscle memory. It's like this, this sole has some memory that I've, like I've changed the, um, the shape of it. And so it's almost like it becomes a little bit elastic if when I, when I do that shape again while it's dry.
Special thanks to my friend Peter Stahl at Peter Stahl Designs on Instagram. Make sure to check out some of his work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.